Your Excellency, Mr. Kitsel, Excellencies, dear colleagues. Let me, on behalf of the Latvian government and the people, warmly welcome you to the heads of the government of the Central and Eastern European countries and China summit or 16 plus one meeting. I am very pleased uh, that the Prime Minister of Belarus, as a special guest, is also taking part in our meeting, and I would also like to welcome the representatives of the European External Action Service that are attending the meeting as observers. During the past five years, 16 plus 1 Forum uh, has uh, evolved and progress, progressed. We have all contributing to developing the structure of the format and establishing different sector, sectoral mechanisms to promote cooperation in various fields. CE countries over the past five years have experienced a growing amount of Chinese investment and have benefited from a growing trade with China and also the growing tourism flows from China, which means that 16 plus 1 is a productive format that contributes to the growth of our nations. Therefore, I would like to assure you that Latvia attaches great importance to the cooperation in this format and is ready to develop and promote and support and back this uh, format in future as well. I'm confident that this meeting will not only increase our uh, ability or preparedness to cooperate with each other, but it will also uh, turn out into a practical uh, Projects. Dear colleagues, the role of China in the world is growing constantly, and the European Union is China's biggest trading partner. So it is only natural that the Central and Eastern European uh, countries are also trying to develop cooperation with China. Moreover, most of the 16 plus 1 countries are the European Union member states, and four are EU candidate countries out of these 16. For Latvia and I think for the other partners, it is important to make sure that the 16 plus 1 process is transparent and comprehensible and understandable. We must make sure that it does not contradict EU laws and EU structure and hierarchy. It is important for us to make sure that 16 plus 1 complements the EU strategic dialogue with China. In order to achieve that, several practical steps have been already taken. 16 plus 1 events have been regularly attended by the representatives of EU institutions as well as observers from other countries. Now, we must make sure that the trade between 16 plus 1 countries and the EU and China trade dialogue are based on uh, same principles and equal uh, treatment. The Three Seas Initiative and the EU-China Connectivity Platform project should not duplicate the effort and should rather complement each other and must also fit within the European Union framework. This year's uh, focus is connectivity, innovation, inclusive and common development. I urge you to view the connectivity concept in its broader sense as trade routes and cargo flows and transport infrastructure, as technology exchange and innovation, as communication and financial sectors, as well as cultural, educational and tourism exchange. And let me also refer to the Sijou Summit medium-term agenda and the six priorities that have already been mentioned by the Prime Minister of China. First, we must continue to work on creating synergy between the European Union initiatives such as the Juncker Plan, the Trans-European Networks, and China's initiatives like uh, the One Road, One Belt, and Three Seas initiative, as well as continue the integration of the 16 plus 1 into EU-China strategic partnership. It is one of the main the themes of the Riga guidelines that we're adopting in a short while during this meeting. And this Riga guidelines will set out specific cooperation activities for the next year. It is also 
one of the topics that had been covered during the think tank conference, which took place yesterday and was attended by researchers and academics from both the 16 plus one countries as well as EU institutions. Secondly, we need to continue working on inclusion of the existing transport infrastructure of the Central and Eastern European countries into the Silk Road and Transport Network. A closer integration, in other words, is needed. And we must also focus on building the required infrastructure that we are still missing in order to draw a up a unified um, Central and Eastern European countries transport network proposal for China. The Secretariat for Coordination of Logistics was established during the 16 plus 1 transport ministers meeting in Lafayette in May of this year. That yeah, has all the uh, required preconditions to uh, service the transit for Chinese to service the transit road for the Chinese goods that can be delivered to Northern Europe through the logistics center, Great Stone. Secondly, it uh, is at the working moment working on direct flights that will serve Chinese tourists and businessmen traveling to Europe. And we are trying to attract the Chinese investment also for manufacturing goods for the European markets. So the Silk Road initiative has been also marked by the arrival of the first container train in Riga today, which is a proof of our commitment to this project. I consider it a real testimony of the 16 plus 1 cooperation, and we should make sure that, that no effort is spared to make sure those cargo flows are regular. Also, in addition, the establishment of the direct flights with China and certain, certain Eastern European countries so this is what we are working on, along with making sure that there are direct connections, not only to Riga, but to other capitals and cities of the CEE region. Third, we must continue to identify mutually beneficial potential cooperation projects, including port infrastructure, which is based on the three C's and port initiatives as well as special economic zones. This would increase cargo handling capacities and the production capacities and promote the industrial development of the sea countries. Fourthly, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to develop our financial cooperation, which up to now has been rather weak uh, from the 16 plus 1 uh, corporation point of view. Today, the 16 plus 1 investment fund will be established and until now, or so far, Latvia, the Czech Republic and Poland have already committed to this uh, fund or to its operation. We invite other countries to consider joining this financial instrument, that, which will be raising the funds for different 16 plus 1 projects. We need to also finalize the setting up of the 16 plus 1 interbank consortium or holding, which will open up opportunities for developing different financial cooperation models. Fifth sector is trade, and the statistical data shows a good potential for development. Obviously, the trade volumes of uh, separate or individual Central and Eastern European countries are very low compared to China's market demand, and our strength is in offering niche market uh, products to China. I believe that there is a room for exchanging experiences and examining opportunities for developing new solutions and models of trade with China, such as multilateral cooperation models, e-commerce, and other ways of boosting trade. Therefore, we invite 16 plus 1 national business support organizations such as national investment and development agencies and chambers of commerce to the conference in Riga, which will be hosted here in May 2017, and will focus in particular on uh, these issues. Last but not least, it is important to also make sure that people-to-people -people contacts and cultural exchanges are also strengthened. This is what we uh, tried to intensify this year. We must continue, however, to promote development uh, of 
cooperation in the sectors such as tourism, education, science, and culture. One of the most common barriers in boosting um, the business contacts is lack of information about each other. And the best way to overcome this uh, or bridge this information gap and get to know each other is through uh, increased tourism and cultural exchange. In addition, we must agree, obviously, that developing cooperation in education and science, we are that by developing cooperation in education and science, uh, we are investing in the strengthening of our relationship in future. In terms of education, we must promote the exchange of students and lecturers, language learning, and uh, translation of uh, literature. Using this opportunity, I would like to thank the Chinese Confucius Institute uh, headquarters who, together with the Latvian University, organized 16 plus 1 Sinologist Conference, which takes place in parallel with uh, this meeting. Finally, I want to underline that our cooperation in science, technology, exchange, and innovation has a very promising future. Because in order to achieve progress and efficiency in different fields, we need those new technologies and innovative solutions. Dear colleagues, connectivity and innovation are the two main paths that we need to take to make our cooperation successful in future and to develop it and make progress in strengthening our relationship. And we will work on strengthening of our relationship with all our energy and uh, the determination. I would like to stop here and turn the floor over to the Prime Minister of Change. Mr. Kitsian, please, the floor is yours. Your Excellency, Prime Minister Marys Kuczynskis, dear colleagues, at the outset, I want to thank the Latvian government and Prime Minister Kuczynskis for your thoughtful preparations and arrangements for this summit and for EU, Austria, Switzerland, Greece, Belarus and the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. This time you attended the summit as observers and I welcome all of you. In the past September, the G20 Hangzhou Summit was successfully held where broad consensus was reached to work towards an open world economy. The 16 plus 1 cooperation is a step to move towards such an open world economy. Over the past five years, we have worked together to carry out open and innovative cooperation. Uh, we have made solid steps. Since the Suzhou Summit last year, we have made fruitful results and the cooperation framework, such as the Build Pass the Belgrade Railway, the Stanari Thermal Power Plant, as well as the success, successful acquisition of the Smidrevel steel plant. We have carried out institutionalized cooperation in nearly 20 areas, including business, people-to-people -people cultural exchanges, and youth exchanges. And the over 50 measures set out by the social guidelines have been basically implemented. At the moment, the world economic recovery is weak. Local and regional hotspot issues and conflicts have cropped up. Terrorism and the refugee issue, as well as other non-traditional security threats, have become more acute. Destabilizing and uncertain factors are on the rise. These have presented severe and new challenges to the development of various countries. Under such circumstances, we need to further expand our common interests and our need for each other and for our cooperation has been on the rise as well. Working together to expand, enhance, and upgrade 16 plus 1 cooperation is very important to world economic recovery, to trade liberalization, economic globalization, 
It is also important to world peace and deliver benefits to our peoples. 16 plus 1 cooperation needs to stay in line with the prevailing trend of globalization. Economic globalization and regional economic integration have provided important driving force for rapid world economic development over the past de decades. Uh, they can meet the long-term and fundamental interests of our countries. Yet at the moment, setbacks in globalization and resurging protectionism of various forms have cast a dark shadow over the future prospects of the world economy. It is high time that we, act we actively promote trade and investment liberalization and facilitation, keep our markets open to each other, consolidate regional economic cooperation, and jointly reject trade and investment protectionism. By doing so, we will not only add momentum to our own development, but also contribute to world economic recovery. 16 plus 1 cooperation requires an international environment of peace, stability, and sustainable development. Terrorism is the common menace to mankind. Both China and Europe have suffered from this scourge. Refugees and migrants have now become a headline issue, which has not only taken a heavy toll on relevant countries, but also affected regional peace and development. The international community needs to step up coordination and common response and offer support for proper settlement of this issue. To, on this front, China has expressed clearly that we will provide support to the best of our ability. Europe is a major player on the world stage. There is no fundamental conflict of interest between China and Europe. We are at different development stages and enjoy high economic complementarity. Both are committed to multilateralism and to support diversity of civilizations. We are both participants and contributors to the international system. 16 plus 1 cooperation is an integral part of and a helpful complement to China-Europe cooperation. It will help promote the balanced development and economic integration of Europe. And in conducting our cooperation, we have also followed the material experience formed through China-EU cooperation as well as relevant China-EU use in conducting 16 plus 1 cooperation. And the 16 plus 1 cooperation has been consistent with EU laws. We have respected each other. And this can help promote the development of China-EU relations, as well as the development of China-CEC relations. China hopes to see a unified and prosperous EU, as this can meet China's own development interests. We also hope to see a multipolar world. We want to see a strong euro, as this can provide a sound external environment for China's development. Dear colleagues, thanks to over four years of development, the 16 plus 1 cooperation has acquired more effective institutional framework. This summit is targeted at discussing some real issues. I would like to make the following four suggestions. Number one, promote infrastructure and connectivity cooperation. China encourages Chinese reputable and capable Chinese companies to conduct project contracting, PPP, and other forms to take part in the high-speed road network, port network, power grid, and internet development in CEE countries. We would like to promote the development of Budapest Belgrade Rail Link and China Europe Land Sea Express Line, so as to forge transport arteries running through the CEE region. We also support the development of transport corridors between Asia and Europe we want to increase China Europe train freight train services, set up more logistic centers in CE countries, so as to help enhance the CE countries' role as a transport hub on the Eurasian land bridge. And in this connection, China's Belt Road Initiative 
can form synergy with the development strategies of CE countries. Number two, underpin 16 plus one cooperation with financial cooperation. China has high quality and affordable equipment and production capacity. And both China and CE countries are carrying out industrialization. And some countries need to carry out reindustrialization. Our economic complementarity has determined, has made our cooperation very promising. We may easily come up with a long list of good projects in 16 plus one cooperation, yet the bottleneck lies in funding. Just now at the Economic Trade Forum, I announced the establishment of the 16 plus one financial holding company. China has signed MOUs with Poland and Czech Republic on making contributions to the company, and other CE countries are most welcome to take part. And in addition to that, China would like to use more RMB as well as relevant euros to carry out fundraising on the international market so as to increase the fundraising capacity of this company. Meanwhile, China Silk Road Fund and other financial institutions will also use equity and bond and other forms to provide financial support for 16 plus one cooperation projects. And within the framework of EBRD, China is also willing to carry out third party cooperation with CE countries. And the financing means may be diversified, but we need to stick to the principle of corporate initiative and market based operation as well as government encouragement. We need to follow commercial rules, and such financing should be a two-way street with both parties contributing. I believe that with the financial cooperation as the magical catalyst, many major projects can get, can get off the ground soon. Third, explore cooperation on green economy. CE countries enjoy superb natural conditions. You have uh, high quality and affordable agricultural products which can well meet the rapidly rising demand of Chinese consumers. China wish to Im Im import more agricultural products from CE countries. Meanwhile, we would like to work with CE countries to expand agricultural investment and trade and actively dis discuss the possibility of such uh, projects as livestock farming, which is also a significant part of our production capacity cooperation because this can help increase the value, add more value to CEC's agricultural products and ex ex expand export to China. And um, clean energy, we would like, also like to strengthen cooperation with CE countries. Number four, intensify people-to-people -people exchanges. We need to make free use of educational, cultural, tourism, health, local, and youth cooperation mechanisms to further strengthen people-to-people -people exchanges. This year marks the year of people-to-people -people and cultural exchanges. China and CE countries have held literature forum, cultural and creative industries forum, and visits of CEC painters to China, as well as other colorful events. People-to-people -people exchanges can mutually reinforce economic ex exchanges. In the modern society, people's needs have diversified, and they need cultural and creative industries to support such need. At the Economic Trade Forum, I talk about the emblem of this summit, which is the diamond shape, a shaped, the diamond-shaped emblem of this summit. This itself is an artistic design, and this symbol has reflected the humanitarian spirit as well as people's need for diversified products, because at the moment people's needs for, for products have become more diversified and different people have different needs. 
So in this sense, people-to-people -people exchanges can help promote economic exchanges. It can also help promote and tap the potential creativity of our peoples. And with such creativity, our economy can boom and our society can progress. China also supports the early establishment of the Coordination Center for Cultural Cooperation. And to support, we also support the Bridge of Future Youth Workshop. And in the next 10 years, we will invite 1,000 CE young people to, for training in China. China and EU have extended mutual visa exemption treatment for diplomatic passport holders. We hope that CE countries will also ad adopt more visa facilitation measures and special arrangements for Chinese tourists so as to attract more Chinese tourists to your country. In China, every year, over uh, 110 million Chinese tourists make overseas visits. We hope that through China's CEC cooperation, more and more Chinese tourists will travel to CE countries. China also supports the designating 2017 as the year of China CEC media cooperation, so as to increase the visibility of our cooperation and bring our people together. When people-to-people -people exchanges boom, China CEC cooperation will thrive. Well, the door leading to great opportunities is opening right in front of us. Let's seize the opportunity, beef up action, and consolidate China CEC cooperation and China Europe cooperation so, so as to bring benefit to our peoples. Thank you.